Look, I hate to say that I made the best space bar switch. I hate to say it, but I, but I did, you know? Yo, what's up guys? How's it going? How's it going? Yeah, today we're gonna be building the Cycle 8. Pretty, pretty stoked to see it. But today we are gonna be using GMK Lime keycaps. I did go ahead and get me a little lime beverage. Nice and crisp, tart on the palate. Love to see it, man. I got in a little care package from Keebs and Cables. So they sent me over these guys. These are the Ice Sindal Switch. I hope I'm saying that correct. But these are a take at a deeper, more thocky HMX switch. So instead of HMX, which is typically very clacky, very high pitched, these are meant to be a little more deeper sounding. And in my hand, they don't feel like they're like long pole. It feels like I don't hit something whenever I'm bottoming out. But they have a nice little top out sound. Just like my ice lattes, they do have some sparkles like distributed in the top. Very smooth, they look cute, they're green, so that's why I felt like we would use these today. They feel good in hand, they look cute, love the packaging as well. It also came with like, if you, I think if you get like 90 switches, it comes with like a, a soup spoon, which is pretty nice. Yeah, so pretty excited to give these guys a test. I guess actually real quick, right before we get into the board, I did get in some samples for my Necochino set. And I'm quite happy with um, with how everything is turning out. The novelties look really cute. The colors are right where I want them to be. Overall, very very happy with the with the set right now. Yeah, can't wait to uh, get these guys in your hands soon. These are ABS with UV print because they were originally PBT. Had a lot of issues with every single PBT manufacturer that I sent it to with getting this color correct. Me and MVKB had kind of worked on using these custom icons, custom legends and everything. But yeah, everything's custom, so it, it is UV print, which I'm I'm happy to say everything looks great. They're crisp, uh, haven't noticed any bad alignment or anything of that nature either. So I mean, so far looking pretty promising there. Now, let's get into the board itself, shall we? So this is the Cycle 8 right here. I like the packaging on this. It feels like a very premium packaging. TKD, Trace Kits Design, Trace Yard, produced by Trace Kits Designs. VTX Engine in Cycle 8 with the Vertex logo there. Pretty sick. Okay, so box, and inside the box is a carrying case. No, uh, no handle on the carrying case. I guess you could say that's your handle right there, that little guy. Might break your finger holding that. Pretty nice uh, quality case. Nice hard shell. TKD logo right here on the packaging. This is foamed up here, so good for protection. Bottom also feels like very sturdy, solid. So the color of ours is like this, um, it's like a blue gray. Mine uh, doesn't come with the accent. I would have preferred it. I actually really like it, but and without it, it does feel very classy, very stealthy. Yeah, so that's a feature that is available if you guys wanted that. Oh yeah, now this, this color is pretty fire. I like the internal engravings too. Trace kit design, trace yard. Yeah, the color is solid. Like it's a unique color. See how it feels to crack open? Solid, smooth, very smooth to open up. You have some like foams here, which I guess help to align the PCB and plate from rattling around or to also prevent this case from hitting on the edge. Ooh, very satisfying clicking. Let's take a look around the board. <laughs> That's actually a really hot side profile. Starting starting at $159. I like the little swoop, the subtle curve right here. It reminds me kind of, it gives me like a little bit of a sonnet vibe. But then you have these two aggressive like cuts here. Now this side profile is actually clean. Compared to like the original Cycle 7, this is a huge upgrade. Taking a look at the back, we have a bit of a curvature. It's not like sharp, it, it curves up. Very smooth transition. That back weight is also really nice. I like that they have like the two different materials, the brushed with the PVD. Cause usually I'm not a fan of PVD, but here I, I actually kind of like it with the differing materials and textures. It has like the smooth and rough. Like this color with the red, it kind of gives me like um, Garchomp from Pokemon. Like Garchomp vibes. Wish I had a Garchomp keycap set now. And you have the Cycle 8 logo right there on that little piece. You also have the 8 right there. 
Kind of nice. Keeps it from being too plain, I would say. Comfy front height. I don't know the front height. I'll, you know, obviously I don't have a way to measure. I'm telling you that I'm able to rest my wrist and type at the same time comfortably. 17.5, yes. I mean, this is insanely comfortable. Like the typing angle is so low, I feel like. I believe this is our PC plate. Look at this, it's like a smoky PC plate. Don't see many of these, to be honest. Really nice looking. Bro, it's the 4th of July, but they put the barbecue beans in the box. You have your uh, gasket beans. I like the packaging, by the way, on the, on the accessories. We have O-rings. Very curious to try this out here. So we have PE foam, plate foam. When I remember this from the Cycle 7, this is like a really interesting feeling and looking like protective case foam sheet because it has the this part on the back. We have an extra daughter board because it looked like there was a daughter board already installed. We got some stabs. Nice to see some stabilizers included. Our bump-ons for the case. Custom as well, but looks like. So love to see that. Love some custom feet on a board. And then we have a, a lonely little space bar foam. Can we get a, oh, then we have our PCB. Ooh, chat. Ooh, look at that. Beautiful 1.6 millimeter non-flex cut PCB. This is what I live for. Cause those flex cut plugs didn't make a huge difference before. And we've got some JWIC hot swap sockets. For support, we don't have much chat. We don't have much on the hot swap. We have complete uh, 6.25 or 7U bottom rope, and then stepped caps. That's it. No split backspace, no split right shift on this guy. I will admit though, looking whenever I was looking at the case color before the stream, or this morning rather, and trying to decide what we were gonna be using today, the color I have is kind of a difficult color to figure out a keycap set for. That's the only complaint that I have at the moment with this specific color that I received. I kind of compared it. It looked like GMK Lime would be a pretty good keycap set for this color. These are very pretty switches. The green is like so saturated. I really like it. It doesn't come across very well on the camera, unfortunately. Yeah, these are some pretty tight O-rings, chat, to, uh, to stress. They don't have like as much give as you would think. They're very firm. So I'm very curious how that's gonna feel to type on. We do have a ribbon cable. So those are always super fun. I know everyone loves the ribbon cables in the keyboard hobby. So this post right here, whenever I press the space bar, I don't know if you guys can hear that. It's like rubbing a little bit. We'll see if that is like a noticeable noise whenever we are actually built like typing on the board. Okay, let us get on our top frame here. That looks pretty solid, right? Like the colors? I think so. And it matches the green of the switches. You know, it's, we gotta, we gotta get it together. And the margarita and the chain dull. It's all, it's all coming together here. GMK Lime, kind of an underrated set. I really like it. Ooh, that's me. That's me with the cycle eight, by the way. It's morphin time. GMK line. Dude, this looks really clean. Here you go, you ready? You ready, you ready? This is for you guys. Ooh, that is a hot ass booty. This is what I'm like, I mean, look at that side profile. The fact that this keyboard starts at 150 and looks this good is actually kind of crazy. That shadow fall off right there, Oh my gosh, that is beautiful. And I also like that the back has that curve to it. It feels really, really like comfortable. I mean, tell me that is a beautiful angle. That, that's gonna be my main photo angle right there. Boom. You have your brushed and your PVD looking really clean. And then you got the Cycle 8 badge right there. Official Captain Sterling shake test right here. It ain't coming apart. I am a little upset that I don't have the little piece here, to be honest. I think visually I would have loved to see that, but it's okay. It is available in two options. And to be fair, without it, this build is very clean. But now let's get into the sound test. This is no foams on a polycarbonate plate, GMK lime, 
and ice chain doll switches from Keeps and Cables. These are like a deeper sounding HMX apparently. We also don't really know where the stabs are from. They look like maybe Gateron or Duroc type style. Oh, we also are using the split O-ring mount currently right now. This is the metal colorway, by the way. It's like a bluish gray. Out of the gate, the sound row to row is very balanced. Usually these two rows can be very deep sounding compared to the alphas, but honestly they all sound pretty good. Kind of good. It's kind of really good. Mod check. I think I overlued my right shift. Sorry. Sounds pretty good. I would say um, compared to the Cycle 7, this is miles better. The Cycle 7, my main complaint is that it had the flex cuts. It needed something to really make it stand out sound wise, like a switch, a really intense switch, or you kind of had to hit all foams, or you kind of had to use the flex cut seals with case foam to get the Cycle 7 to really be where I think it needed to. This, no foams, sounds very full, very balanced, a good amount of Basiness, a good amount of clack, especially with these uh, chain doll switches. They're pretty like clacky on the upstroke with a deeper bottom out. Yeah, I mean, all in all, very, very impressed. Before we judge it too far, I want to try these. I feel like I'm going to like the sound of these a lot more. Also, by the way, with the PC plate and these O rings, there is a decent amount of flex to the board. It feels very cushiony to type on. But I feel like these will be even softer and will actually bring out a little more high end. All right, let's switch to the other mounting style. I think I like this better. They feel and sound kind of similar. So this is the Cycle 8 iced chain doll switches and the beam gasket mount right here with GMK Lime on a PC plate, no foams. The space bar is a lot sharper in this configuration. Still sounds pretty good though. Wait. On this row, I do, I do hear something. On this row, I do hear a little bit of like hollowness. But this space bar does have a smack to it, a certain slappy sound, if you will. Two hours later. I think it was the switch. <laughs> I mean, that is actually day and night. These these two sounded better. I don't know, something about this switch specifically is causing an issue. I don't know what that is, but yeah, dude, it is literally day and night different chat. Look, I hate to say that I made the best space bar switch. I hate to say it, but I, but I did, you know? That sounds so good now.
I guess the last thing we will do is just toss in the case foam, see how it sounds with it, compare this to case foam, and then go over our overall thoughts and opinions about the Cycle 8. Okay, I think I like it better with the case foam. And not because it makes a crazy difference, but it does clean up something. Like there's something in the bottom row that I don't get anymore. And it also increases the volume of everything. Everything does feel a little louder now. Here's how that sounds. There's just like a balance. Oh, this sounds, this sounds really good. Up arrow now sounds god tier with the case foam. Yeah, and by the way, the ice chain doll switches sound really good everywhere else. But for some reason, something about it was causing a rattle, like a crazy rattle in the spacebar. But yeah, the Ghost Dragon spacebar definitely took it from here to there. You know what I mean? I think the case foam, since it's just like more thin, por porous style, that it, it doesn't make it sound too foamy. I actually think it adds a lot to it, but let's take this out. Do one more with the beans and see how things go from there. It didn't make it feel too foamy, which I actually really appreciate. Like, I actually really appreciate that. Because now I don't have to feel guilty for using the foam. I feel like there's a lot of foam hate. Can we just stop the foam hate? This sounds a lot better. But this build, the beans definitely has more of that resonance, specifically in these two rows right here. So now let's try the foam on this. Even with the foam too, by the way, it still sound, it still feels relatively soft to be honest. Like it's not like super stiff. Last sound test, uh, we'll be using Ghost Dragon Spacebar, Ice Chain Doll Switches on everything else, uh, just case foam, PC plate, and GMK Lime. Let's give it a go. Wow, that's crazy. That made a huge difference. Still a bit though here, I would say. Yeah, so this, the beans, need the foam for sure. It sounds like day and night difference, foam and no foam on the beans. The O-rings, I think you could go either way. I still like how the foam, the case foam, given its porosity, rounded out the overall build. I think O-rings with the case foam is my favorite build of the day. Overall, I think this is a improvement over the Cycle 7 from a visual, from sound as well. In regards to the typing feel, definitely not the like softest board I've ever typed on. I would say it's kind of in the middle. It can be uh, with these, I feel like you got the most bounce with the O-rings with no foams. For typing feel, I guess you can get pretty bouncy with this and pretty stiff with the case foam. This doesn't have much bounce on the beans with the um, case foam. We might say it's like a, a seven on the typing feel, to be honest, just because I think you can't get super bouncy with it, but it's still a very comfortable typing experience overall. In regards to sound, I actually am pretty impressed by the sound. I think, I think the board sounds really good. It sounds miles better than the Cycle 7 just because of the no flex cuts to me. Um, so that's huge. I think that's a big W for, for the board in general. So on sound, I would say we're at an eight. I think, I think it does have room for improvement. I'm not sure what that is, but it does sound really good, really full, uh, really balanced. 
I would say. I think I think it does have that deeper, more deeper undertone to it. Now for visuals, I think this is the strongest suit of the board. Considering it starts at 150, you get a really nice TKL. You also get the accent, which I think the accent to me makes the top down. I don't have that, but I think that adds a lot of character. This side profile right here on a $150 keyboard, that's a 10. I'm sorry. I'm just telling you how I feel. I love how that looks. It looks very like sharp, very like aggressive, but with the subtlety of the curves, it, it gives me like a sharp, a shark vibe. I really like the side profile, like a dragon claw, something like that. Like that's, that's what I think of whenever I see this and I really like it. Also speaking in the design too, we have the ball latch system, which you can see very sturdy, very secure keyboards not coming apart I think that is very good I also really love the back weight the back weight is beautiful I really like the differing textures you have the brushed look versus the very smooth PVD I think that is really nice and then I also like this little badge I think it's cute it, it could go without it to be honest but I like it it's cute I like ball catch ball catch is one of my favorite things in keyboards and then you've got that little accent on the back to make it not so boring also, very cozy front height. This keyboard is so comfortable to type on. So I'd say design for me, given the price point, specifically, we'd go for a 10. Like, if this was like $500, I would maybe say the design is like an eight. But given the fact that it's 150 bucks to start, I think the design is very strong for that price point, and that's why I give it a 10. Well, so that's overall like an 8.5. That's a good board. It's an improvement over the Cycle 7, looks great. Oh, it's definitely, yeah, we can give this a kiss, dude. Right there on that beautiful side profile, going in. Mm. This is a good board, dude. So yeah, thank you guys for tuning in. Hope you enjoyed it. Great board, totally recommend. The group buy goes live on July 12th, so let me know what you guys think. Thank you for tuning in, and as always, I love you guys, and I'll key you later.